This week on Maker Update, we're at the Game Developers Conference covering the awesomely weird maker-made games of Alt Control. Hey, I'm Donald Bell from Maker Update, the show where we update you on cool things makers are making. And it's a very special show today. We're at Moscone Center in San Francisco for the Game Developers Conference. What most people don't know is that within GDC, there is a very cool, very weird event called the Alt Control Showcase. These are one-off indie games that you'll probably only find at this event, and what makes them special is that every game has a unique and unexpected way that you interact with it. And it's those alternative controllers that really make this a maker's event. If you don't believe me, let's go check out some games. All right, uh, my name is Lucas Diab. I am a student at Sheridan College uh, out in Toronto, Canada. Um, me and a few of my uh, classmates have decided to make an alt-control GDC game. Um, and uh, we're just students. We're just here to have fun. So the concept of the game is you play as a little uh, boxy-like character and you uh, fly or control a paraglider and fly through a little expansive landscape. Um, you get little speed boosts and rings along the way to give you a little boost and the goal is to get the best time. Friendly competition between all the other players. This control interface is uh, relatively simple. Um, all it is is uh, two rotary encoders that detect uh, you pulling on a, uh, a string, essentially. And as you pull on the string, you're going to turn with the paraglider. Um, you got a little uh, a rotary encoders detecting how hard you turn, um, where you are in the rotation, uh, and all that sort of stuff, just to make it as, as, as precise as possible. Yeah, so the encoders are just, uh, all, it is, all it does is take a, a rotational input, and that is just, we just have a bunch of wires going along the entirety of the controller, and it just goes towards uh, Unity, and then I think our programmer uh, made it so every rotation uh, is just another input, um, and that detects how much you're rotating, etc., all that kind of stuff. Yes, that is a little Arduino that our, our, our programmer welded together with the ends of the of the wire, but that's all it is. It's just a, that's the that's our that's the brain of our entire controller. So my name is Aaron J K Truesdell. I am a PhD candidate at Georgia Tech, and my game is called Haberdasher. The great thing about it is it's really simple. It's a giant hat for two people. Um, and that's also what makes it really fun. Uh, you've got to bring a friend, or if you don't have a friend, you've got to make one in line. So great networking opportunity, great way to get to know somebody. And the premise is that you are Zorg the Infiltrator, an alien sent to Earth to blend in with the humans, gain power as a businessman, and take over the world. So to do that, you have to do what your alien society has learned that human business people do. You have to pick up a briefcase, you have to get a cup of coffee, and you have to go to the office. But the challenge is, you're sharing a giant hat with your partner. We use a Wi-Fi enabled accelerometer, and that sends data about the angle the hat is tilting at to the PC that hosts the game. And that translates it into the avatar's motion. Uh, it's very straightforward, and the really great thing is, it's kind of a low tech situation. We don't have a, a fancy kind of setup. We're running this off of an old smartphone um, that's just embedded in the front of the hat and that's what sends all the data. And so the hat's basically a gigantic phone case. That was definitely the most challenging part of working on this game, was crafting a hat that was this big that's still light enough for people to wear. So I, don't, I think you got some pictures before, but as you can see, it's hung from the ceiling. The hat is light enough for people to wear, it's just kind of uncomfortable. Uh, so we do that mostly for comfort rather than necessary support. It's mostly made out of sculpted foam, uh, like the spray foam insulation you can get at your local hardware store. Uh, and then the surface is done in lightweight spackle. But the real challenge was making sure it was light enough every step of the way. How do you build something this large? Uh, we ran into a bunch of different challenges, not only with weight, but with things like manufacturing techniques. I would have loved to use a laser cutter to cut out the foam that formed the brim, but I didn't have access to a laser cutter that was big enough. Uh, three by four feet sounds huge until you're cutting something that's four feet by eight feet. Um, I did wire bending, I did foam sculpting with a wire wheel attached to a drill, which murdered my hands. But it's, it's been a great time and I love the way that people walk around and say, oh my gosh, what is that? My name is Derek Williams. Uh, I worked on the hardware of the game um, and I built out the levels. Uh, so 2x4 Racing is a cooperative racing game where two players control the same car together back to back. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a fun, chaotic experience about 
getting around the track and swapping roles every once in a while. So we've got two pilots. Uh, the one in the front is going to be steering the vehicle and the one in the back uh, operates our patented engine crank. Uh, so making the vehicle go faster and slower. Um, the car has fuel and when it runs out of fuel, it explodes. So you're racing around the track, collecting fuel and trying to get the fastest time. We're using uh, fidgets from 2003, uh, which I think our programmer would not recommend uh, using. I think he would recommend using something more up to date. Um, he had to completely rewrite how Unity was communicating with the fidgets. Uh, so I think that was kind of a nightmare for him. Um, but we're also using Arduino for uh, stepper motor control on our dials. We have a dial that counts the amount of cows that you hit throughout the race. Um, so that's, uh, I did that part. Uh, it's for stepper motor control and it controls our buttons. I think Fidget is the company that makes the encoder that we're using uh, to, to basically, it, it straight up controls the wheels. So yeah, we're from students from the University of Utah. So our game is Funny Kitty Stick. It's a old control games that we built with a electric magnet. That helps with haptic feedbacks when the cat grabs the stick. I'm the AI engineer, my name is Wei. Um, hope you guys like the game and having fun with it. I am not the hardware engineer, but I can briefly explain it to you. So the controller, the main stick, is um, it's made of 3D printed um, materials. And there's a Wii remote um, controller in it. We have a sensors on our, um, on our TV. So right below it to kind of uh, detect the spatial movement of, movement of it. So with the electromagnetic, we have a, as you can see, a little big one up there and the down below in the black box, <laughs> we have a bunch of wires and um, an Arduino boards that um, kind of load our programs. So once the cat grabs it, we're going to um, activate the electromagnets and kind of pull the players down a little bit. It's through Bluetooth, um, so we kind of send a signal through our, to, the, to the board and activate the electric magnet. It's as simple as that. So I'm Victor, uh, and we, are, we have created with my team Grocery Trip, uh, which is a game you play by two players, and when one person could drive a shopping cart in the mall and the other one is in the cart and punch the people, and grab all the things that you can. The goal was to make the people in the in the shopping cart like as if it was in a real shopping cart. Uh, so we use a lot of buttons for this, and we have a little card uh, that transforms uh, the push on the buttons into input of the computer, and the computer like, transforms those inputs into like if it was input from a real keyboard. So, like for example, if you press a button, it the, the computer will understand like as you press A, and so all the game is made like that everything like just fit well, and that everything has the right button connected to the right thing, and at the end, uh, at the end, it works. Uh, it works like just in your code as in any game. All right, so basically, we all, this is stumped. This is a lumberjack wood chopping game. Over here, that we have our axe. Basically, anytime you get a chop prompt, you want to hit down onto the our detection pad over here. And we also have anytime we see a board for our friendly raccoon, you want to you don't want to hurt him, so you want to trash him. So we have a foot pedal down over here that we use to trash any objects. Sometimes we'll get a different combination of items that you might see over there that you might need to chop and trash just to mix it up. Um, the goal of the game is obviously to get the high score, and you have five lives. So the higher score, the better. And yeah, that's our game. So basically everything, all you see here inside runs a, a Makey Makey board. So um, what it really relies on is like conductive uh, circuits. So over here we have, this is actually just electrical tape that we have, and this is steel wool. So anytime they make contact, it's basically a circuit and it sends a message onto the Makey Makey board. Technically it reads as a click for the computer, but it's the illusion that you're actually just hitting it down with the ax. And same thing with their uh, paddle over here. Basically, it's two pieces of tin foil, so anytime they're pressed together, it's another connectivity circuit, and that counts as a space. So it's basically click and space, but chop and trash. So that's the illusion. That's how everything works. All right, so that was a look at just some of the games of All Control GDC. A big thanks to DigiKey for making videos like this possible, and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.